There's nowhere you won't go Nothing you won't do No place that I could hide You're always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me Good morning boys and girls! It's so good to see you again! Today we are starting a new lesson series And in this lesson series, we will be learning about the prophet Nehemiah It will help us learn about finding God's will for our lives but before we dig in deeper, let's play a game! Our game for today is called Tune In. Here's how to play it. I will be saying a word or a phrase and you have only 20 seconds to guess what I am saying. But you won't be able to hear me. You will have to tune in by reading my lips. And this time, we're going to go for Filipino food! Okay, let's have a practice round. The practice word is... 20 seconds. The word is... word was adobo. Did you get that right? Great job! So now I think you are all ready. Okay, here we go. The word is Okay, let's do this one. The word is... Great job! I think you get it. The word is... Pansit Palabo! Are you ready for the last one? Okay, here we go. The word is... The word was... Sinigang na paboy! That was a tough one! You are all amazing kids! Great job! Give yourselves a thumbs up! In today's lesson, we will learn that Nehemiah put the needs of his people and the need to serve God over his own interest and comfortable lifestyle. Let's check today's Bible verse! Good morning kids! Time to learn today's Bible verse! Our Bible verse is in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11. It says, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11. Let's say it together, friends. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer 
of this your servant, and to the prayer of your servant who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of these men. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 Let's say our verse again as loud as we can, just like when Nehemiah was talking to God. He was not probably loud, but I could imagine his face pleading to God. Ready? Go! O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of these men. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 Oh, I felt that prayer, kids! Bible verses are not only powerful, they are also like a treasure that we can keep in our hearts. Learning Bible verses helps us know more about Jesus and His words. Let's say our verse one last time. Go! O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of these men. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 You've got it! It's time to worship our great and perfect Father. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship and honor Him on this very special day. Let's stand on our feet and raise our arms like this. Let's pray this together as we invite His presence in our service. Let's pray. God, we welcome your presence today. Have your way in us.
Today's lesson, we will learn how a man named Nehemiah partnered with God and followed his plan to fulfill a task that seemed out of reach to many. Nehemiah sacrificed his time, energy, and comfortable lifestyle to serve God. Nehemiah went where God told him to go, and he fixed a big problem that others have ignored. Let's find out more about this big problem. Our scripture today is found in the book of Nehemiah chapter 1 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 9. This talks about Nehemiah's return to Jerusalem. Let's watch this video. God's story, Nehemiah. So part of God's story is about a guy named Nehemiah and it goes like this. Remember God's family? They were called the Israelites because they lived in, you guessed it, Israel. But some of them lived far away from their home, and one of those guys was Nehemiah. He lived in Persia and worked for the king. One day, his brother told him that a city in Israel called Jerusalem was suffering, and many people there weren't following God anymore, and their city wasn't in very good shape. Nehemiah cried, God, you are wonderful, but your family's home is in trouble. Please help us. When I serve the king his wine today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. 
Later, when Nehemiah served the king's wine, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah told him about Jerusalem and asked if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead, he said go. He even helped. That's because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. Anyway, Nehemiah went to work rebuilding the wall, but little did he know he was going to need to ask for a lot more help from God. See, God and his family have always had enemies, and these enemies wanted to stop Nehemiah and the people helping him. First, they made fun of them. So Nehemiah prayed again. He said, God, some people hate us. Please get rid of them, and went back to work. Now, God does hear and answer every prayer, but sometimes not in the way we expect or even in the way we want. And at first, it seemed like God wasn't answering this one at all, because when the enemy saw that Nehemiah was still building, they planned an attack. But Nehemiah trusted that God heard his prayer even if it didn't feel like it. And God did! He caused some people to overhear the enemy's plan and warn Nehemiah. Even though the enemies were still after him, Nehemiah planned a defense and told the others, Don't be afraid of your enemies. Remember the Lord. He is great and powerful. And on they worked, building, building, building. The closer the wall got to being finished, the more Nehemiah's enemies realized they couldn't stop him by making fun of him or by attacking him. Hmm, time for something else. They tried everything. They sent messages to get Nehemiah to leave the wall and meet them. He wouldn't. They hoped Nehemiah's hands would get weak, but Nehemiah had asked God to make his hands stronger. They even paid a priest to ask Nehemiah to leave the wall and come to the temple. But Nehemiah trusted God more than anyone else, even the priest, and he refused to stop doing the job God had given him. Kids, are you willing to listen to God and obey him? No matter what? Well, finally, the wall was done. God's family got to go home again. And Nehemiah's enemies found that nothing stops God's plans. The Israelites celebrated and praised God. And as they praised, they realized how much their sins had hurt God. And they felt terrible. They told God they were sorry and thanked him for helping them. Then they made a brand new promise to follow him and Jerusalem was once again a safe place where people honored God. And that's the story of Nehemiah. You know what, kids? There are many wonderful examples in the Bible of people seeking God's will for their lives. And Nehemiah is a great example of a man who was seeking after God's heart. He spent days fasting and praying to God in heaven. During this time, he learned what God's will was for his life. And now, kids, we are going to ask God what causes his heart to weep and what makes his heart jump for joy. So now, each of you will get a piece of paper to write on and something to write with like crayons or markers. I will give you 30 seconds to get your supplies. Ready? Go! Did you get all of your supplies? Awesome! Now, I would like everyone to draw a big heart like this. Are you done, kids? Great! When you're done with the heart, I want you to close your eyes and just relax. 
put your thoughts to God. You can put your head down if you would like. As you are thinking about God, ask Him to connect your heart to His. Ask, what is in your heart, Lord? What causes your heart to hurt and weep? What makes your heart jump for joy? You know what, kids? God might answer by giving you a picture in your mind or just by giving you a thought. Draw it out as best as you can inside the heart. If you do not get an answer, that is okay. You can try doing it again tonight during your bedtime. Just pray to God, read your Bible, and finish the activity before you sleep. And when you are finished, turn your paper heart over. And at the back, write down what that picture means. Then you can share your picture to your parents or to any grown-up in the family. Or you can share it with us by taking a picture of it and sending it in the message section in our Living Temple Facebook page. We'd love to see them, kids. Nehemiah was zealous for God. He saw God's plan and partnered with God to help fulfill this plan. Many people probably thought that the walls were needed to be repaired, yet they never did anything about it. So kids, let's pray together. And as we close our eyes, let's ask ourselves these questions. Have we ever had a time when we could have been the one to fix a problem? Would we consider ourselves to be zealous for God? Let's pray. Dear Lord, please hear your servant's prayer. Let me know your heart and plan for my life. Show me how to be zealous for you. Teach me to put the needs of others before my own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today, we learned about the calling of Nehemiah to rebuild the walls and the gate of Jerusalem. We discovered that when God calls us for a task, He will provide protection, provision, and favor. Come back next week to see how others reacted to Nehemiah's big ideas. Have a great day everyone and have a blessed week ahead!